so we're here at uh, Linaro Connect, and um, yesterday you were talking at a session. And uh, was it about uh, booting? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it? Bootloaders? What do you yeah. Call it? Yeah. Yeah. UEFI and. So uh, it's quite a heated uh, discussion there. Why? Why is it heated? Why were people? Well, I wouldn't say it was. I wouldn't say it was heated so much as um, bootloaders in the ARM space. Um, are, are an interesting topic because ARM's growing up in getting into more general purpose computers and one of the things that happens as ARM does that is it moves away from these traditionally very vertically integrated platforms like cell phones where you don't need to worry too much about the bootloader because you provide the whole system. You provide the system that has U-boot, you provide the system that has, you provide the kernel, you provide all of the applications. Um, when you have a general purpose system, what you need to do is you need to um, you need to have a means, you need to have a platform so that you can choose which operating system you want to run, you can choose um, between various alternatives, not even just Linux perhaps. And the problem there is that um, then you get into the question of what's your bootloader technology going to be? Is it going to be um, you know, U-boot or is it going to be something more uh, more generic like you see on x86 systems and so that's why we got into a conversation around my sense of inev inevitability that you will see um, UEFI on ARM which people seem pretty comfortable with and I think you also will see ACPI on ARM systems and people are um, fairly comfortable with that actually as well which is a, a good thing but we weren't so much in a heated debate as a um, spirited conversation, I guess, around the fact that there are certain things that are coming to ARM systems, and we need to make sure we're ready for them. Um, we, we're not really in a position to say, we don't want this, because it's going to happen. So the best thing to do is to say, okay, we know this is happening, let's find a way to all get along with, within that. So can it all get along, or some people have different ideas and they don't want to agree, or what's, is there any problem, or everybody's gonna, are you sure everybody's going to agree? No, I'm not, and I think what's going to happen is we're going to see, we're going to see um, some ARM systems will be very um, specific, very integrated, like the, the camera we're using here to record um, is um, a device that's very, very heavily integrated. There's no need for, you know, general purpose bootloader or, you know, general purpose platform. It'd be nice, but you don't need it. You're not going to put a different operating system on your camera. Um, but if you had an ARM laptop, or maybe an ARM server in the future or something like this, then um, I think you, you do need to have some standards there. You do need to get some of these things in place. Not all of them will, but those that don't, I think, will be artificially limited to um, certain operating system choices. And I want to make the world open and have a standard in place so that you can choose what you want to run. Um, the way to do that is to standardize the base so that... Um, you can take any ARM system out there that's general purpose and you can choose what operating system you want. And that operating system might not even be Linux or Android. It might be, um, who knows, it could be Windows, it could be, you know, maybe Apple do something. Who knows, right? But, but if, we, if we artificially limit ourselves, then we constrain the growth opportunity for ARM in general. So, so the whole aspect of bootloader mm -hmm. is pretty important to boot operating mm -hmm. systems. And, uh, right? I mean, yeah. is that... Uh, um, is that key differentiating factor between x86 and ARM? Is the whole, the whole mess around the boot, booting? I don't think booting so much is, is the big mess. I think the big the the big problem that we have is uh, is around uh, having a unified kernel. That's a, that's a much bigger issue. Um, ARM has too many too many um, there are too many different platforms out there. Not enough standardization. It, it's being worked on, and great strides have been made over the last year, especially. But it's not so much how you boot, it's really about how you handle the differentiation between different hardware platforms. Do you think tablets and smartphones should also have that kind of... Uh... Flexibility? Yeah. Um, I think it'd be nice. I think the reality is, though, that um, whilst many consumers uh, in, in our space who attend these events maybe play with CyanogenMod and Android rebuilds on their phones, and of course I certainly do myself, um, I don't think the average consumer is really interested in rebuilding the operating system for their device. So I think, as far as the end consumer is concerned, consumer electronics devices will be, will, are, and will remain very vertically integrated. 
I think, however, that open systems are always preferable. They do provide more choice for consumers and for, for users in general. And so I think it would be a good thing to have, but I'm, I'm somewhat convinced that there's an inevitable separation between um, tablets and smartphones that are intended to be integrated and general purpose um, uh, netbooks, laptops and servers based on our architecture that I think will be much more versatile and will be designed to be uh, upgraded and have the operating system replaced. But the ARM processors are uh, advancing so fast Yeah. and uh, in theory with an HDMI output any phone pretty soon can in theory run a full desktop, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So That's true. So you'd probably want to be able to boot any Linux and maybe also Windows if they want and all that, you know, like just have the full thing run on low phone. I think the, I think, um, I th again, I think I would and I think a lot of people that attend these events would, would like to see that uh, flexibility. I think as far as the device manufacturers go, it's going to be a long time before they realize the full value there in having a general open platform. Um, that would be a good thing to have. But I think what will happen is um, if you have a tablet and you want to run a, a, you know, a more general purpose experience on it, I think where we are in the, in the interim period is you know, the expectation will be it will be running Android and you know, various other things on there. I don't think you're going to have a, a tablet where you replace Android with a general purpose distribution in the short term. It will happen, but we have to get to a point of having um, you know, the ability to do that. Uh, is the reason for the manufacturers not to do it, other than maybe thinking marketing or design and all that, could it be because there's a risk of breaking devices? Yep. So could it be a system where you would kind of like verify a whole bunch of different OS somehow. Yeah, you could. I mean, the I think the main problem you have with, the, with if you're a device manufacturer is um, you don't want to have undo customer support queries. And the, the biggest concern is if you have a, a camera or a, or a cell phone where you allow people to replace your operating system with something else. And notice I use the word allow. Now that's not saying that I actually like that, but that's that's how they see it. If they allow people to, to customize their device, then the problem they see is that um, people will do things that are not supported and they will expect to return their device or whatever. This is why they make it very difficult to do that um, in many cases, and they will, I think, continue to do that. I think one solution could be, well, there's two solutions. One could be a standard platform that looks a bit like a, you know, a PC in terms of being able to install different operating systems and you, you nobody nobody's really concerned when they install a PC operating system that they're going to break their PC, right? They can reinstall something, they have a BIOS, they can you know and that could be UEFI in in, a, in the ARM space. There are many ways that you could do it, but it hasn't happened yet. The other the other side of that is um, that you could have trusted um, verified you know virtual machines. So one way it might happen in the future is that devices run virtual instances of other operating systems. And we've already seen that with, you know, Canonical have done a, um, some proof of concept code around running Ubuntu on, on consumer devices like that, and, and good for them, and that's great. Um, would we do that in the Fedora space? Maybe we will. We'll, we'll have to see where, where things go. All right, so um, are things moving super fast in this area, or not fast enough? Um, yeah, I think, I think, um, I think ARM um, is a very, uh, very fast-moving area. Uh, I think there's a lot of exciting stuff coming over the next year or two. Um, we've got um, small embedded devices and increasingly smaller embedded devices, right? So I have a, I have a little ARM device here. This is a Fitbit, which uh, has a Cortex. Uh, you can see on the back it says the name there. Um, this has a uh, Cortex M0 processor. Um, yeah, and what it does is it tracks every step that I take um, and measures how many miles I travel and all these things. And then it synchronizes with my friends online and, and all this stuff. And that's great. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of really tiny, interesting ARM devices. There's some really great cell phones coming. We've also got ARM servers coming. So I think the, the diversity right, between very small and very large devices, and that's going to increase. Right? This has almost nothing in common with a server. 
other than that it's running an ARM processor perhaps. So there will be some very different challenges between optimizing code and systems for you know, very resource constrained devices designed to run for several weeks at a time and server systems that are designed to be low power but um, you know, are not intended to, you know, they're, they're more general purpose. So there's a huge diversity there. So if you were able to kind of like uh, guide everybody, or maybe you are already guiding everybody in the industry, but let's say you had some, what would you tell people to do? Uh, well, I, th 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 there's two different things that I, uh, two different ways we can take that question. I think the, the first one is um, the industry as a whole, the, the ARM Linux industry, for example, um, I think the biggest concern we have is to standardize as much as we can. Where it, where it makes sense, there's no need to differentiate over areas that don't add value, so let's try to standardize the base platform and, and all these things. Um, what I can personally attest to is that you know, I'm working on the Fedora ARM project, which is um, sponsored by Red Hat um, and others, and um, what we're trying to do is to bring Fedora Linux to, um, to ARM systems and bring ARM to the same level of recognition as x86 in the Fedora space. Um, so what I can personally do there is um, push people to um, challenge their assumptions around Fedora, challenge their assumptions around um, maybe where we were in the past, and you know, try Fedora on ARM devices um, and uh, help us to, uh, to to make that a success. So that, that's one of my main focuses. Hopefully there will be a few million uh, one laptop per child ARM part. Chipped. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. In, in and, in fact, and in fact, that's running. Uh, that's running the uh, Fedora ARM uh, derived distribution. So uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I very hope, hope so.